All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about a six axis robot using the Easy PLC Machine Simulator. And we're gonna show this in the environment of using the Studio 5000 version 31 with emulator. Now, so everything will be simulated. Uh, basically, the code is already written and you see the process running right now. I do have my OPC topic running and it is locked using RS Lynx Classic. So you can see the, the um, simple robot right here. I have it locked. That is what is the communication path that is currently being used for the Easy PLC as far as the IO driver. Now again, uh, you can see the commands that I have for the analog and you can see the analog input commands for the six axis robot. Um, now this will be talking about indirect addressing and how to do that with a finite state machine. Again, a finite state machine being a set number of states that you use to program a machine. Uh, and that you need as required to have the machine work functionally and properly as designed. Currently I have three routines, um, very, very, very simple. Main routine is all the, the whole state machine and how the process is running. Um, in state one, let's go ahead and talk about this. State one, if the process is running, we're gonna set the, uh, if and the actual um, robot count is excess of five or uh, is equal to zero, then we're gonna set it to one. That's gonna give us our first layer of place position. Again, so at this point in time, we're, all we're gonna do is verify that the robot is in the resting position and, it in, and the photo eye is made for the actual box being at the first start of it. So at the box being at the first photo eye. All right, so with that said, if it is, then it's gonna go and how we're doing that resting position right here and how we're verifying that is we have a uh, access tolerance check that we're actually coming in using. Now, how am I doing that? I'm basically taking the readouts, the feedback I'm getting from a machine simulator, and we're doing, we're basically saying I'm adding uh, basically 0.003 to each one. I am subtracting 0.003 to each one to develop a tolerance. If it is within that tolerance, I'm saying that that section, that axis is good. If it is within that uh, axis two tolerance, again, that axis is good. You can see those bits transitioning. So that is how that works. So instead of having big long rungs, I am separating that into a separate um, a routine so that we can keep it nice, clean, and easy to read. Again, so after uh, very first um, state, state zero, state one is going to call a pallet into position. If the pallet is in position, we're gonna transition to state two. State two is the pick position. This is where we will be doing the pick position for the state two. And I'll draw this up just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so state two, you can see that right there. This is the pick positions. The pick position never changes. Although I am I am adjusting the axis I move, like axis one, axis four, axis uh, six, I am moving immediately. I am then moving a time, I'm doing having a running a timer. And if the timer is timing, I'm allowed to move the arm up and down just a minute amount. And if the timer is in within a set uh, range, I want to pivot the actual arm up and down. Okay, with that said, that will give it, me adequate room to do my pick. So again, that gives me the proper movement of that arm, that six axis robot to do that actual pick in the right position and do the proper function. Not only that, make it move smoothly and not look awkward when it does that. So as you see, when it comes back in here, this will come back to a resting position. Then it will go to a pick position. Now watch the pick position as it goes. So it comes over, then it comes down, it adjusts the rest of the axis as soon as it comes over here, adjusts the axis, and then it moves down. So you can see that that is functionally the way that routine works. You can see each one of these being called. Now, as it goes to that position and it is within range of the pick position and the robot does have it, meaning it is detected, then it will transition to state three. In state three, we turn on the vacuum to uh, grab that product. Then we come over here to state five. State five is a moving to resting position that is moving back to the resting position right here states and as soon as it goes into the uh, tolerance and everything is good we're going to go into state or that was state four state five will be the actual moving to the uh, place position 
Now that is a little bit trickier because we're doing indirect addressing and based upon where the system counter is, what layer we're on, I'm going to point to a separate position for each axis. So each axis I'm gonna move uh, axis one immediately, axis two, uh, six and three, I'm going to move if the timer's timing. If the timer's done, I'm going to move axis five, four, and one, or two. Now, how that works with the indirect addressing is based upon the timer or the counter that is down in uh, state eight. Based upon the counter ACC, it's going to come in and point to that uh, position. So in this case, it's pointing to layer two and the robot will point to layer two. So I, I have adjust positions over here where I am coming in showing that. So let me actually bring this up a little bit better so you can see it. You can see this is layer one of axis one, layer two, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four of axis one, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four of axis two, layer five, or layer one, I'm sorry, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four of axis three, and so forth. You can see that. So each one of these, and they do have all specific set positions, so they're not all the same. Each one of them will be slightly different to get the proper movement of the robot head. Again, verifying that those tolerances um, are all working off indirect addressing as well. You can see that based upon here. Let's move that in. So you can see this is moving the indirect addressing that is currently on, like state four. It's saying, is it within that tolerance? I'm building a tolerance again. You can see I'm moving, I'm adding plus. 003 to that building the upper tolerance plus 0 or negative 0 or minus 003 to give a uh, lower tolerance if the axis is within that tolerance it will come in and say the place is good you can see those bits transitioning so i'm building up a tolerance and that's using the io from the actual what i'm commanding the analog output and what is the analog output is actually doing so you can see that functioning in the way the robot is actually working. Right now, currently, we're gonna be in the very first uh, layer. So this is gonna be picking the first layer. If we look at the counter, the counter of that should be on layer one. The ACC is actually of that counter is one, so that will be placing it in the value of one. So this will be coming in, placing it in the value of one. So it knows how far to move each axis down to hit the pallet, right? And then it releases the vacuum and then comes back up to a resting place at the resting point right here. As soon as it hits that, it will count again. Now we're on layer two. At this point in time, if we looked at, at that counter, it would be layer two. So this is exactly the way this finite state machine is working. And the finite state machine, again, is a set number of states that you want to program, that you need to program to make the machine function properly. Again, so state eight comes down, that does the counting. And in state nine, if the counting is not done, it will return to state zero and resume to the next layer. If state, if, if the counter is done, then we move to state 10, at state 10, we exit the conveyor, or we exit the pallet, we run the pallet out, and then we finish the product. And we do that right here by doing, we get the either create a box or we create a pallet. Now that's basically using the machine uh, simulator, this easy PLC machine simulator with Studio 5000 version 31. Again, very functional, very easy to use, but very challenging at the same time because again, you have your digital input or your digital outputs that you're, com you're controlling and your digital inputs over here. You have your analog input. So watch right here when this comes down to pick the last uh, box, it's gonna turn on the vacuum, which is gonna be over here. And it actually missed that one because of my graphical card. Uh, we're working with, obviously working with uh, the actual software uh, is not exactly working with uh, the recording uh, Camtasia that I'm currently uh, working with. So that's probably why this is kind of graphical heavy, I will be honest. Um, the software itself is kind of, so that that's probably exactly what happened as far as the graphics. Uh, so with that said, it will finish out. 
and then come in and start the next layer. So the good side behind that is you it may it missed that layer, but it did not actually damage any product. It did not actually you know as far as that goes uh, functionally miss as far as that goes. It could be a reject down later on the line. This is showing how the pick and place works. Again, so what we're commanding that output of that robot right here is that's exactly what it's going to do over here on the inputs. So again, let's watch this and you can easily see that it comes in, drops down. All right, so we got that next one. This comes to a resting point at the right, right here. When the resting point comes in, now it starts that loop again. We're going to layer two. When layer two comes in, we're gonna actually pick layer two. The picking position never changes. It's always gonna be constant. So we don't have to worry about adjusting that. We're going to adjust the place. So if we talked about that and we walk, walked over here and looked at that this is exactly what we would be seeing right we're actually seeing the place right here see the height right here that's exactly what we're adjusting right here so just to kind of give you a base implementation of what we're exactly talking about when we're adjusting the height and why we're using indirect addressing in this actual program so with that said hopefully that was a you know very educational and it showed you how a pick and place is done again using the machine simulator the easy plc machine simulator very functional tool very helpful uh, i use it quite a bit to help me grow help me ch like challenge myself every now and then to actually you know build something that is worthwhile and obviously you can test in a real world environment without having to damage anything without ha worrying about damage physical equipment or even have something you know you know that you possibly have a potential of messing up you can actually come in here program everything and then come back and implement it in the real world or if you don't have anything to implement in the real world you can merely just practice as if i just like i do to pick a machine come in make it work see how it works get a scope of work and then come back and learn from it right again i showed a video talking about how to actually uh, how a six axis robot worked and i did that using this specific software again very functional very helpful very uh you know something that is is great for a beginner or great for a, a seasoned veteran you know, always got to sharpen your tools always stay moving forward and growing I have a motto myself is to be a better version of myself tomorrow than I am today. And that requires moving forward. That requires pushing myself and challenging myself. With that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.